Heavens alive, who are you? Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. It amuses me to watch your puny efforts. If you've seen our review of the Loch Ness Horror... Ah, I won't hear a word against that decent animal. ...you'll know our distaste for American actors attempting Scottish accents. Well, it cuts both ways. Don't worry, dear, I suppose worse things have happened. Devil Girl from Mars was produced by the Danzigers, reputedly the cheapest of 1950s British filmmakers. But I warn you, I'm counting the spoons. The film starts kind of like The 39 Steps, with a man on the run taking refuge in a remote cottage owned by John Laurie. You don't see this. <laughs> then things get weird. It's like something from another planet! That's because it is. My name is Naya. And like all hot female aliens, she's come for one thing. Meanwhile, I will select some of your strongest men to return with me. And she's not alone. Are you alone in the ship? Johnny is with me. Who? Johnny. Klaatu. Barada. Nikto. Yeah, he might be scarier if he wasn't struggling to walk down a slope. You speak unwisely. Ignoring the walking fridge, this isn't that bad. It's funny, and I do think they're in on the joke. She comes from Mars. Oh, well, that'll mean another bit. It stars Hammer Stalwart, Hazel Court. Your face seems awfully familiar to me. And is atmospherically shot by Hitchcock favourite Jack Cox. The low budget doesn't seem to have really hurt the production values. Gee, that's something. It has hurt the story. You speak in riddles. Naya is just here to fix her ship. She was aiming for London. She has no reason to interact with the locals. You are a very poor physical specimen. And yet she visits. Then goes away again. In or out. Then comes back. Then kidnaps a child. I will show you wonders you have never seen before. Then comes back. Then goes away with an old man. Then brings him back. Then swaps the child for an adult. <laughs> I bet that scared you. Tommy! Oh. Whom she then lets go. Michael! Then comes back to fetch him. It is time, Earthman. Then brings him back again. He tried to gain control of the robot. Then leaves. And comes back. And finally leaves with another man. At some point, someone sat down with the screenwriter and said, Look, we've only got two sets. Could you write it so the characters just walk endlessly back and forth between them? But that's preposterous. If she needs men, why wouldn't she take them all? Why would she just need one? Because when you get to London, you will need a guide. Yes, you don't want to end up just doing all the touristy things. Stop it! And what the characters say makes just as little sense. Nothing like this has happened to me before. I would think that's a given. It had to happen sometime, somewhere. Yes, the arrival of an alien dominatrix from Mars is a well-known scientific inevitability. There's no reason for believing that we on Earth are the only living people in the universe. Yes. Who knows if there's other life forms out there? There's a Martian spaceship parked outside! You fools! This film is just a way to deal with the big issue of the day. After the war of the sexes, women became the rulers of Mars. Heed the warning of the Danzigers. First you give them the vote, then you give them equal pay. Pretty soon, they're travelling through the universe with their killer robots in search of men. No doubt you're resigned to the inevitable. And is that what women really want? And in all those years, I haven't done a single thing I really wanted to do. Gee, I wonder what those things could be. Find the right man. Have children. And don't you forget it. Thanks for watching. Should he have blown the ship up, or should he have carried on to Mars to have sex with an endless array of Martian dominatrixes? Let us know your thoughts. Click here to see more reviews, here to subscribe, and whatever you do, don't click down there. Come on, Jamie, while we're still alive, we might as well have a cup of tea.